Welcome to this video. In this video, let's explore about WebSockets. Let's have a look at what are WebSockets and whether it is still useful to learn and use WebSockets in your applications. First, what are WebSockets? WebSockets are yet another way to communicate between two entities. So it's a yet another inter-process communication mechanism like uh, the regular sockets, the Berkeley sockets that you might have come across, other protocols like HTTP, JMS, AMQB and so forth. Web sockets are usually used between a web client, which is usually a browser and a server. But it doesn't have to be, it can be used outside the web as well. Historically, uh, web sockets were introduced together with the HTML5 specification and the reason it was born uh, was mainly due to various limitations of uh, HTTP protocol, particularly the, the version 1. HTTP, as you may know, is a request response protocol, which means server only responds upon client request, which means it's a unidirectional. At a time, there is only one thing happens in a particular direction. Client either requests, server responds. There is nothing like both client and server uh, calling each other uh, or sending messages across at the same time, which is what we call as bidirectional. HTTP has been a unidirectional protocol, particularly the version one. And but this is a big issue uh, for certain uh, types of uh, applications and also uh, like many applications uh, don't want to lose connection and always create a new connection when a client needs to request something from the server. To mitigate this, HTTP had uh, this uh, notion of long polling, uh, which means client uh, frequently requests server if there are any data to be sent over. If there is no data to be sent over, server says no. And client keeps on asking for more and more data whether there are any data to be sent by the server or not. So this is what is normally called as long polling. But as you may guess, that actually uses a lot of tiny network traffic which uh, can deteriorate your application performance and also can eat up uh, the valuable bandwidth. So this has been an issue uh, with HTTP version 1 for a long, long time. So with all these uh, obstacles and uh, downsides, WebSockets were born. And uh, as I mentioned, HTTP is a unidirectional protocol and this is uh, particularly a one way of uh, looking at uh, how uh, an HTTP header will look like. And this connection keep alive is a way uh, that HTTP used to uh, keep a connection alive uh, even though request response protocol is like one at a time but we usually know the HTTP clients and server also knows that there is more to be communicated so it's not a good practice to close the connection then and there you can do so the, the protocol supports but more often than not uh, there is always a keep alive connection a header being sent uh, which is to uh, indicate that connection needs to be kept alive and of course for that uh, those are the hacks which I mentioned like long polling uh, is used to uh, accomplish the task and uh, so this also means uh, it's not very viable and suitable for applications uh, that require server push based uh, logics so what kind of applications? Uh, if you think about applications such as web trading applications where uh, a particular uh, stocks uh, values like you know currently trading price and various other facts like uh, what volume is being traded and everything needs to be sent over to the client uh, from a server application and often in a browser let's say uh, that needs to be kept updated even though client requests or not and of course if it's HTTP it has to be requested otherwise uh, the, the, the server won't respond but for such applications HTTP is not suitable as you may 
uh, guess uh, up to now, right? And similar things go with other applications like chat applications, maybe web games because uh, you know uh, multiple people play, multiple uh, players play a web app, uh, a web game, and then updates, uh, scores, and everything needs to be sent over and broadcasted for different clients. And, and also, uh, if you have seen live uh, games and match score update uh, websites where, uh, let's say, uh, a, a match or a game is happening and you need to know the, the score of the game, uh, whatever that uh, game is, uh, such a technology, such an application uh, being shown in a web browser needs updates from a server without the, the client requesting that for such application uh, for such applications HTTP is not quite suitable as you uh, uh, can guess by now so this is where uh, web sockets uh, are used and was also invented for and basically what web sockets uh, uh, provides uh, to, to the table is that it is a bi-directional protocol un, uh, unlike uh, the HTTP 1 protocol which is a unidirectional protocol so which means client can send uh, messages to the server and server can also send messages to the client at the same time and uh, and it's quite important to understand that WebSockets uh, was uh, uh, invented uh, to overcome some of the shortcomings of HTTP. However, uh, note that it is not an extension of HTTP, which means it's not something that was uh, introduced as something on top of HTTP. It's a completely new, brand new uh, protocol, which is based on TCP, um, and uh, which means it's uh, it's going back to the old uh, mechanisms uh, and and it allows uh, keep alive connections uh, quite handy. And uh, however, the WebSockets initial request is always initiated using HTTP uh, with an upgrade request. For example, uh, this is a typical uh, uh, HTTP header that you might see initial HTTP header you might see. On a WebSocket initiation or a request uh, from the the server, request to the server to upgrade to the WebSocket connection over HTTP. If that request was successful, the server will respond with uh, 101 uh, with switching protocols. As you can see, this is a 1.1 protocol, and it says uh, upgraded to WebSocket and connection is now upgraded uh, which means from uh, this point on the client can communicate with the server uh, over the WebSocket protocol and the server will also uh, communicate with the client using the WebSocket protocol and as you can also see the data exchange can be initiated by either client or the server so this is quite vital for applications like what I uh, spoke about earlier on uh, you know chat applications live game uh, score applications and so forth it's quite important uh, that uh, data transfer is initiated by either party so so we spoke about http1 and we didn't much talk about http2 it was uh, by intention and uh, so of course this slide i dedicated for web suffers versus http2 so http2 uh, is a uh, in my opinion it's a groundbreaking uh, uh, initiation uh, and uh, invention i would say or upgrade and because it's a bi-directional protocol and it's a binary protocol uh, unlike the http1 which is a text-based protocol and http2 addresses almost all the shortcomings of http1 uh, it has uh, uh, it implements compression, multiplexing, and server push. Uh, looking at all these, uh, you can guess that HTTP2 addresses somewhat similar uh, uh, space as WebSockets as well. So, if you look at HTTP1, uh, when a when a client, typically a web browser, requesting a web page, what usually happens is, in, in case of the server push uh, functionality, 
uh, it downloads to HTML and then it goes through the HTML page or the content to see what other CSS uh, and JavaScripts uh, needs to be loaded and then it goes on requesting those files and so forth. So that means it's a sequential thing. But in HTTP 2, server proactively sends or pushes all these uh, files uh, that's needed for the HTML to anyway uh, run successfully. Uh, so it does that proactively, which means it will uh, reduce the round trip time and network latency and everything uh, and, and so forth. So it also, of course, uh, it's possible because of other things like multiplexing and so forth. So that will uh, definitely enhance performance when it comes to HTTP 2 uh, based uh, client server uh, communication. So if you look at server push, uh, it looks somewhat like a WebSocket capability. And so it's natural to think whether WebSockets is even relevant today with HTTP 2 uh, is in uh, is in place and but it needs to be uh, you know we need to be careful when it comes to server push uh, technology the server push functionality of HTTP 2 only delivers data up to the browser not to the application which means any application running on top of the browser the server push uh, functionality whatever that is uh, initially the server push we, we spoke about HTML CSS and JavaScript but usually you need data uh, to be captured at the application uh, layer as well but server push doesn't allow that I mean it has some uh, shortcomings uh, to uh, do that so that uh, the data that's been sent by the server is not available to the application but that shortcoming is uh, mitigated using other technologies like server sent events. So it solves that problem of uh, delivering the data up to application layer, uh, going beyond the browser and so forth. So then it's naturally another problem is like, okay, WebSockets, uh, is it still needed uh, when it comes to HTTP2? That's a million dollar question in my opinion, uh, because uh, only time will answer that at the moment when I record this thing and uh, I uh, being a fan uh, of WebSockets uh, itself I believe uh, WebSockets will live for many years even though HTTP 2 uh, is there so that's because uh, WebSockets implementation came to see much earlier than HTTP 2 which, uh, which means uh, the industry and uh, the community around WebSockets uh, have grown and there are many implementations around different uh, programming languages and so forth. Uh, so in that sense, there are very mature, very well tested libraries available uh, for all these different programming languages. And there are more importantly, many applications already have implemented using WebSockets. So it's highly unlikely that everything will be replaced uh, uh, in the foreseeable future.